What is this he has? Hummingbird has got something new here. Wow. Hummingbird just released Honix version 2.30. Now we're talking. Uh, bridges the gap between the Onyx and the core units. Welcome back to another set of tips and tricks and today we got some exciting news from Hummingbird. We can now use our Hummingbird Onyx with a core series unit and talk back and forth. Nine, the what, units ending in 9, like the 999, 859, 1199's, those units, plus the ones ending in 8 series like 898's, 958's, uh, 1158's, 1158s, 1159s, those units are all going to work together. Uh, this is exciting news, but there's also some really cool things. Uh, now, if you've got any waypoints from a competitor, uh, GPS Babel, you can insert the card in the unit and automatically upload those in an Onyx. Uh, a lot of uh, tweaks and upgrades, faster cartography data uploads, faster zoom in, zoom out. Uh, the list goes on. Lake Master Plus support with the satellite imagery and the new RC1 Bluetooth remote support. That is something that I'm really excited about. That was, uh, I gave them that idea a long, long time ago and I think it's something awesome. If you're in bouncy rough waves and a Bluetooth remote, man, you could save waypoints and a lot of other features. You need to check that out. Um, we're going to jump in here. I'm going to show you step by step how to update your Hummingbird Onyx from taking it off the PC to putting it on an SD card and putting it in the unit. So let's jump in here and get started. Okay, the first thing you need to do is come to Hummingbird.com and you will have right up here at the top a, a tab that says My Hummingbird. You're going to click on it when you click on it, this is where you would register your units. You're going to select a username and a password, which I've already done, and I can automatically log in. And as I log in here, you will see all of my products down here that I have registered. This is all units that I've done in the past. And what I'm going to do is we're going to update my Onyx 10. SI combo right here. Here's my unit, here's my serial number, purchase date, and you come down to the new um, the Onyx update. If you've already got 2.0 installed in the unit, you don't need it. If not, it's right down here for you. We're going after 2.30, the latest new version. You click on it, it'll bring up the download screen, and I am actually running this in Google Chrome. So we come down here to the bottom click download. It will download the file right here. Uh, if you want to look at the release notes, it's right here. This file is going to contain the uh, following software. Onyx Unit Software, AS360 Software, iPilot Link Software, iPilot Link Remote Software, SM1000, 2000, and 3000. Those are additional units like if you want Chirp Sonar with the Onyx. Uh, those are black box sonar systems. What I recommend is to put all the software on the unit because if you ever expand, if you don't have 360 right now, you want to expand, boom, you've already got the software up to date when you do expand it. So it's downloading. Uh, we got uh, about 52 seconds left here uh, with the update down. This is going to be instructions down here. I'm just going to quickly go over here. I've opened up a couple tabs. Type in Onyx 2.30 software under support. You go to support here. You can go to frequently asked questions. There's a lot of great tips here and information for you. I bring out up the search box, Onyx 2.30, and it brings up this. This is going to be expanded details of what the software entails. And you can see here there is a lot of feature upgrades that the Hummingbird engineers have been working hard on. There's also uh, a document and it's going to be how to update your software. Uh, you can grab that from 
uh, frequently asked questions. It's got a tip sheet. It's going to show you exactly how to update software step by step, just like I'm going to show you here. Um, and there's a software update guide right down here that we'll download too. Okay, our software is updated. I'm going to open a software update guide. Some things to remember is to when you before you do an update, save your net, save your waypoints and nav data, save your screen captures, the stuff you want, so they don't get lost in it. I highly recommend uh, if you use a unit a lot, once a month is a good idea. This is going to be step by step how to do it. So there's a lot of reference material to help you step by step get these updates done properly. Uh, big thing is I recommend running them on the unit so you do not lose power during it. Now, my Onyx file is in this folder here. If I actually go to my downloads here, it's going to show, it's going to be in a zip file and we're going to have to unzip it. Now what I like to do is I have set up over here on the side, I have a folder set up for Humminbird software. I just moved that software to the Humminbird software and you can see it here. Right click and open. We'll open that file and it's going to contain the updates. This one's going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight updates. You'll take your SD card reader. I've got a remote SD card reader. You want a class uh, four gigabyte class six card. Put that in your software update. We can see the removable disk popped up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here, hit the shift key, and then I'll go down to the bottom one and shift. And then we're going to slide over here. F is my removable file drive. I'll just take all those files. It's going to grab them and put them on my SD card. You can see it's actually right now moving the files to the SD card. When it gets done with that, one quick thing I like to do is go check the SD card. And we'll click on it here. And you'll see that it's copying the files. And on my SD cards, I've got a lot of screen captures. And these files are right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight files to the SD card. The next thing we want to do, pull our SD card out. And we're going to the Onyx. Now we're here at the screen. We're going to confirm. What you want to do is go to Home. What I want to do is just show you settings. You come down here to Network. If you click on Network, you can come up to System Information. System Information is going to show that we have 2.000 on this unit. The Network Information is going to show what we got. We just got the Ethernet switch I have, and this unit. Um, I have disconnected the other unit because I like doing one unit at a time. Just my personal preference. You can do it together if you want, but this that's my preference. Um, so what we're going to do is exit back out. We're going to come down here to our widgets. We're going to go to our files widget. You're going to see the no software update. Come over here, open your card door, and insert the SD card with the updates into the unit. Okay, the unit has sensed the updates. You can see here, this is our current software, this is our new one. Do we want to install now? Hit it, let it go, leave it alone, let it update the software and it will actually shut the unit down and restart the unit and do the software updates that you have on the SD card. I am going to fast forward the video because this is uh, a little time consuming and you're probably not going to sit here and want to listen to me talk while this thing's updating the software.
Okay, we just had success of the software, it says it. The unit's going to power itself down and restart. Don't worry. <laughs> you get nervous here, but it's gonna it's doing its own thing. Just let the unit do its thing. Don't worry about it. Sometimes the best thing to do is just walk away, let it do its thing, and don't interrupt the upload process. Okay, you can see we've restarted now. We're doing this restart process. And this will take a little bit of time, so the unit's doing its thing. Uh, don't interrupt it. Don't touch any buttons. Take the SD card out. Shut power off on a boat. Uh, this will update the unit properly. I'll fast forward a little bit here so it saves a little time learning how to update your software. Okay, it's starting up again. Here's our, it says Onyx 10 SI. It's getting close to being usable. Okay, the update is done. Our hummingbird warning has hit. We're going to hit confirm. We're going to hit home. Come down to files. Tap our files button. And it shows now our units at 2.310. There is a patch 2.310 we're going to install it next. Uh, so that is our next step. And it's going to do the whole process over again. I'm not going to let you sit, he sit here and watch this whole thing, but you've seen the first time, it's going to do the exact same thing this time. Okay, it's getting ready to do the update process of restarting itself. Remember, do not touch a button, open the door, remove the card, shut the power off on the boat because bad things happen when they when this when you interrupt a software update. They're easy to do. Don't get nervous. Just let the unit do its thing. I know you want to jump in here and enjoy some of these cool new features. Uh, I always recommend running the latest software because it has performance enhancing features besides new updates, new features, upgrades. Um, the latest software is the best for your unit because it has the latest information and operating system to make your unit perform better. So no matter if you've got a Core Series unit or Onyx Series, I always recommend running the latest software because the Humminbird engineers know how to make that unit work the best it possibly can and this is going to help you. Uh, the software updates are free if you're the first owner or the 739th owner you can go in register your unit on Humminbird.com uh, you do not have to be the original owner to register a unit to get software update you just need the serial number of the unit and Humminbird will supply you free software updates. We're finishing up the restart process. We come back to our warning, confirm the units up to date. <coughs> and that's all you got to do to enjoy it. Now, one thing I personally like to do is hit menu. I come back up here to settings. I'm going to lose all my cool uh, updated screen captures, but you come to settings, and if you actually push up one, you'll come to restore defaults. I am a firm believer in restoring factory defaults afterwards. With the Onyx, you can save your settings to an SD card. I personally, it don't take me that long. I'm just going to do it, but uh, you can... You can do it either way. You can save your your favorite settings and then install them, or 
I like to set my unit up from scratch. My just my personal recommendations. Uh, I may someday start using the uh, updates, but I restore factory defaults. Yes, it takes a little bit of time, but I make sure the unit is back to square one and everything is set, ready to go, so I can enjoy these cool new features anytime I'm out on the water. Okay, now here's the first time setup, and I'm just going to show you a couple things in here. We're going to, this is where you could import your menu settings. I don't have them. I'm going to do a manual setup. Hit manual setup to start one. Your time format, 12 hour, you can do 24. You're going to come down here to time zone. And we're going to go to central time zone. We've also got daylight savings time turned on. Just hit the return. Date formats right. Units is going to be how your units are. Those are all set up correctly for me. Hit the right arrow. Now here is where you want to do some things. This one I'm going to have side, the 2D side imaging and down imaging data in my transducer. You want to set this up correctly. This is the 2D frequency is not what you want to use. It's what the unit you want the unit capable of doing. So I want 83 and 200 kilohertz, even though I normally use 200 kilohertz only myself. You also want to go to imaging frequency. We're going to do 455 and 800. We don't want to limit the unit to only 455. You set the frequency you're going to use up in the unit later in the settings menu. This is what the, the unit is capable of producing. So this transducer is capable of doing 455 and 800. So you want to make sure you set that up here just like 2D sonar. Temp is set there. Depth offset. Water type, don't need to do anything with that. My preferred chart is Humminbird, Lake Master chart, so I'm going to leave Humminbird there. If I want to do weight, water level offset, I can set it here. I'm going to do that later. You can select your boat icon. Um, you can do anything. Let's just check a bass boat. Um, engine and tanks, uh, vessel dimensions, I don't do anything with that. So just hit confirm. And it's set up and ready to go use. Now, wasn't that simple? Trouble free? If you follow the steps, you won't have any problems. I always recommend to update to the latest software. These engineers know what they're doing to make these units perform the best they possibly can. Your units is only as good as the install and is only as good as keeping the software up to date because they, they enhance the performance of these units as they learn more and more situations from all around the world. Humminbird is a worldwide brand and there's, there is information and features and performance tips to help make it better for you, wherever your part of the world is. Thank you for tuning in to another set of tips and tricks and I'm glad that I was able to help you walk through learning about the Onyx a little bit more and how to update it and make it a lot more easier for you to get the most out of your investment. Thank you and tune in to another set of tips and tricks very soon.